Yeah. Azure Blaster is working to bring you specifications you can relate to so you can have an educated decision on your purchases. We're going to be going live again, so we'll see if this one works this time. Uh, but we're going to go through a few different things. Uh, we have uh, unboxing, we have the Q&A, of course, and we have the ones for the steel testing results uh, for the lubricant one as well as uh, some highlights from the regular steel testing, sorry. Uh, but those are the things that we're going to cover today uh, within the live stream. And then we're going to go through anything else. So if you guys have any questions, we'll kind of go through different things. And we'll see if anybody comes on for it. Uh, but this is going to be how this is going to go. Uh, so we'll start off with some of the basics. Oh, and also we're going to have also this CRKT. There's a 50% off um, code that I did pick up uh, from them uh, to kind of just share out. Uh, so. If you do want to pick up any of the knives, uh, you can buy up to three knives uh, with the code. It's only one person, so whoever has that one person uh, will get that code now from CRKT. You can buy the Shock for $750, and then you get a 50% off code. I think it still works for that. So you're going to pay about $300 something for it if you do want to go that route. Uh, they also have the high-end uh, crossbones. Uh, I think that was an M390. And you can also buy that for half off. But thank you for being on. Uh, so if we have any other questions, uh, throw it up in the comments. Hopefully I can see them as well. I'll kind of go from there. Uh, so I do have live chat. There we go. Okay, uh, so we're going to start off uh, lubricant testing results. So if anybody watched through that video, uh, congratulations. That video I think was about 50 minutes long uh, for that one. I went through the KPL, went through Blue Lube, went through Mineral Oil, uh, and then had the results from that. Uh, so it was a quite a long video. Uh, so to give you the bridge version of that, uh, we're going to go through and actually uh, just cover the results uh, for uh, that information. Uh, but we'll actually start off with probably uh, steel testing results uh, for uh, the baseline. Uh, so this is where uh, we went through and then tested some of these. So like the uh, Civivi, uh, there's the Statera. Uh, this one actually is one that I added the stump, thumb stud to uh, for this one. Uh, so this is now supposedly going to be in D2 uh, for this blade. And then we'll see what the hardness is on that one. So I got the results over here on this side of the page. And we'll see where that one ended out. Uh, so the stat, Statera ended up, uh, it was D2. And then also there was about a 59.4 as far as the Rockwell hardness for it. Uh, so this is all the testing results. All these spreadsheets are located in the description. So if you want to look at either the lubricant testing or the steel testing, and, and the steel testing one is uh, fairly broad. I mean, there's LTK on there. Uh, we have some of John's knives on here. Uh, and then we have uh, in the pocket, uh, we have Jack Farmboy on there. Um, I think we had some Super Steel Steve's, but I don't know if his is on there or not. Uh, but all those things. So this knife here, yes, D2. And then it came out to 59.4 as far as the Rockwell hardness uh, for that knife there. Uh, and then uh, these are some uh, that are, um, one of these is good, one of these is not so good, uh, but we'll talk to those as well. Uh, and then we have another one that is kind of the, uh, really a great knife in the community as far as this one. Uh, this one's gonna be uh, from the Ontario Rat number two. And this one's a D2, uh, so it is D2, uh, 58.7 for the Rockwell hardness for this knife here. Uh, so that's actually now one that wasn't tested before, uh, so it's one that's out there uh, quite a bit. Uh, so still within range uh, for uh, Rockwell hardness for the D2 blade. Uh, so that's a great thing for that one. So this one has also, I do have a Benchmade clip on it. It does seem a little bit washed out as well from the lighting, so I do apologize for that. I do have lighting coming in from the window coming this way. Uh, so if that's too bad, uh, let me know in the comments because uh, that would be something that I'll try and change if I can. Uh, but that's going to be that knife there. And then we do have some of the other ones here. Uh, we do have the Bastion. There's a Bastion Braza Mini Bro. Uh, this one came out to be also, this is a D2. What's up, Kiefer? You're the only one that commented so far. I got some people going in and out, but then nobody commented. So thank you for the first comment of the day. Uh, so this one came out to 59.1 as far as Rockwell hardness. So this is something good too, because uh, the initial one that I tested from Bastion, uh, which was the Falcon, uh, that one came out to be a little bit too low for the Rockwell hardness. Yeah, first, first comment, awesome. 
Yeah, but the, the other one came out to be a little bit too low for the Rockwell. And then one thing that I really appreciated about Bastion was when I let them know about that, they said they would check into it. So whether they did that or not, now that's kind of neither here nor there. But they actually said, okay, great. Thanks for letting us know. We'll check onto it. Uh, so that's something great. But this one, uh, D2, did come out to be correct for the Bastion Braza Mini Bro. And then now we'll get down to the last two, um, kind of the highlight ones. Uh, one of them is from John, oh, actually both are from John S. Uh, but these ones came out. Uh, so one was uh, surprisingly good. One was, I guess, expected. Uh, so I guess for the guess on that one, tested not, have not tested, tested the Kershaw Divin and M390. I think you had that one. And then I did offer up if you want to send it in or anything else, uh, you will get the little dimple on it for the Rockwell. Or if you don't want to do the Rockwell on it, uh, then uh, we would just not do that, but you'd actually be able to do the steel testing for it. More likely than not, they're going to be actually correct for the actual steel, so it probably will be M390, but uh, the Rockwell hardness is kind of the side that we're seeing some discrepancies uh, with manufacturers for that. Uh, but So these are the two here. Uh, this one came in. This is the Christmas box one uh, from Buck, and this is the Gen 1 of the LA Place Gear um, the S35 uh, VN. Uh, so uh, if you, anybody remembers the previous one, so it tested the Gen 2. Uh, the Gen 2, they went and uh, flipped it over to a tip-up. Great. Yeah, send it to P.O. Box. It's in the description, and I'll get it sent out with the next grouping. Uh, but uh, this one, uh, so the tip, Gen 1 was tipped down. Gen 2 was tip-up. Uh, so Rockwell Harness was like butter soft. It was just really horrible for that. And also, if you remember or not, I mean, LA Police Gear, just they don't say anything. So I emailed them, I called them, and I didn't hear back from them. Uh, so um, whoever's in kind of the customer service side, uh, it's it's a hard one there because, yeah, they didn't do anything to really help out. They didn't at least just say, even if they didn't do anything at all, they could have just said, oh, great, thanks for the information, and do nothing with it. That's all that you need to do. I was just trying to give them some heads up before the previous steel testing, actually the first steel testing that I did. Uh, so, any guesses on uh, steel for these two? So we have the Buck. Uh, normally they run 428C. Now there's a lot of their steels. And then we have the S35 VN uh, Gen 1 uh, for LA Police Gear. So that one is... So, I didn't write it down, but this one... It did not come out to be uh, S35. Uh, so this is a, a really good as far as the hardness for it. Uh, so this one came out to like a 59.9. And then uh, one other location, it was about a 55.9. Uh, but this one came out to be, I believe it was 440. Um, double check me on the steel testing chart, but this uh, was not. So, I mean, S35 is what it's listed for the Gen 1. Uh, and then uh, the Rockwell hardness is better uh, than the previous one, so that's a good thing. But uh, this one turned out to be uh, not uh, legitimate S35VN uh, for the steel. Uh, so LA Police Gear uh, pretty much will not get tested again. I think Kurt is probably done with testing uh, LA Police Gear. I think we had three or four of them go to him uh, just to, to try and figure that out. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, LA Police Gear, you're done. Hopefully it comes off the website. Hopefully you fix something. Uh, but I'm not going to be testing uh, LA Police Gear anymore. Uh, so the other one that's going to be a pretty good one. Uh, so this one, um, again, that was the Christmas box. I think the Christmas box was like 20 bucks or something. Uh, so this one, uh, normally, again, they run like 420 440 something like that for their steel. Uh, this one I tested out to be 14 c 28 uh, so if you still have some of these Christmas boxes laying around, uh, this is where we're going to get about about 56.3 for the Rockwell. didn't test out to be about pretty much the composition of 14C28N. Uh, so if you see these Christmas boxes laying around and you do want to pick it up, uh, then most likely uh, you'll be getting a much uh, better steel than expected. It doesn't actually say on here what type of steel it is, uh, but you'll be getting one with much better steel uh, than normally what you see from Buck. I don't know if Buck uses you know, 14C28 uh, very often, uh, but uh, that's what you're gonna get uh, for this knife here. 
Uh, so handles are somewhat okay. It's not too grippy. Uh, but yeah, Christmas box turned out pretty really well uh, for uh, that knife here. Uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at for that. A uh, lubricant testing. Uh, so again, for the ones that did not make it through the entire 50-minute marathon of the lubricant testing, I don't blame you. Sorry, I took a drip and drink a coffee, coffee there. Uh, so uh, who else did we have? Yeah, that's right. And they're turning out to be good for it. So at least for this model came out to be that that steel. So is that across the board that a sheet and sheet get kind of mixed up uh, in the whole gamut of things? Don't know, but uh, this one came out to be very good steel. So uh, you may have uh, kind of picked up a winner there. Uh, so going on to the steel test, now the lubricant testing. So tested uh, out blue lube, uh, no lubricant, basically just the uh, the washers. Uh, for the Teflon washers, uh, tested out the KPL, KPL heavy, mineral oil, nano, 5, 10, 85, and grease. So this is the testing for that. Uh, again, it's going to be easier to read if you actually pull it up uh, on uh, the actual um, the sheet. Uh, so click on the link below if you want to look at that later. Uh, so did five pulls for each of them. So disassembled, cleaned, lubricated, five pulls, disassembled, cleaned, lubricated, five pulls over and over again. So that's why that video took 50 somewhat minutes long. Uh, so if anybody wants me to put, put it on as a podcast or something and just let it play, go ahead, but it is long. Uh, so uh, so Blue Loop, you can see goes across here. Uh, so kind of the, the baseline of it. So Nano came out to be uh, the least amount of resistance uh, for it. So the Nano uh, 10, uh, 83.67. And then, uh, but surprisingly, uh, the Nano 85, at least on that knife, I I actually liked that uh, pull a lot better. That the smoothness of it, it was just it felt a lot better in my opinion uh, for the Nano 85. So I'm gonna try that on some of the ball bearing knives, uh, and then see how that goes as well. Uh, but so it was actually um, Nano uh, 10, and then it went to KPL. KPL was number two. Uh, basically, uh, basically with uh, Nano 85. So between 90, Nano 85 and KPL, uh, those had a very similar uh, pull uh, resistance for it. So that's the lubricant testing for that. So in the bridge version, either Nano or KPL, uh, either one will do you well, uh, but that's going to be kind of how that goes. Yeah, it was, it was it was quite quite the thing there, um, PGR. Uh, so do appreciate that, and I mean that's where a lot of this is coming out to be the testing to give you guys as much information as possible. I try to make things as uh, straightforward as I can. Uh, the hand sizing chart, uh, so you can print that out. You can have it available, so you can see where that knife is going to sit for you. The male and female version of that one. Uh, we have. The I think I'm gonna bring back the the soup can one because for some reason that one kind of hit home with a lot of people. So when I do the pull test with the Lyman pull gauge to actually get uh, the actual oh thanks Patty welcome aboard. Uh, so now uh, so when I do the pull test now uh, to actually get the the weight for the actual deployment, uh, it seems like when I did the one uh, for the Reich knife, no, uh, the one of the other ones, no, but it was. I said basically the weight, I compared that to soup cans, and then that kind of resonated with folks. So I might bring that back. And even behind this, the edge testing, uh, so now that one's like kind of more like sheets of paper, so you can actually uh, equate it to that. Uh, so those are kind of the baselines uh, for a lot of those. Uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, some other ones. Uh, we're going to be unboxing this, but before we get into that, now we do also have finishing out the blind knife challenge so we are on uh, round two uh, so that one's going to be one that we actually have available now so now we're looking at releasing that actually uh tomorrow uh for that one so thanks chad uh but we're looking at releasing that tomorrow we're probably going to stagger it uh, so we've just finished out the last person on the roundabout uh, for the knives so we had two knives go out uh for it and then uh, that's going to be uh one that was provided uh, by Power Cutlery, uh, so they actually helped us out with that and uh, sent the two knives around and so they're the same models different directions uh, So that should be out tomorrow. We're trying to get things logistically done uh, So hopefully tomorrow 
If not tomorrow, it'll be next Saturday. Uh, so just keep your eyes open for that. We'll make the announcement as far as times and everything else if we can get it worked out uh, for the Blind Knife Challenge. And then we're setting up for round three. Uh, so if you have any uh, reviewers that you want to get on board with that, you're like, like your favorite reviewer needs to be a part of it reach out to them, kind of have them reach out to me and we'll get them put into the mix of things because it's a fun example for it. I mean, for the people that have gone through it, they've had a ball with it. It's kind of changed it up with your standard uh, things about researching it beforehand and trying to get all the information, then trying to portray the information. This is just reopen the box and you try and see if you can figure it out with missing one of your senses, which is kind of difficult at times. Uh, so even uh, Jay at the Knife Beater tried to use his sense of smell uh, didn't really work out too well for him uh, there, but that's just another thing that happened with it. So we have uh, some knives that came in. Uh, this one came in from uh, uh, Big Red EDC uh, on one of the live streams. I think it was on, uh, who was it on? Zach's live stream. I just said that I didn't pick one of these up before, and then he just sent one to me. So that's awesome. Uh, but I think for this one, the Pub, which is the probably the least expensive Sinkovich design you're going to ever purchase, uh, goes on Amazon by $14 to $17. Uh, but there's two things that I would change on this, uh, and I might do, uh, is I might actually add a little divot here. Uh, so that actually gives me a place to actually rest my finger, because I do like to use it one-handed more so. And then also, I would like to probably add this troil, actually take this piece of metal out um, for it, so you can actually put your finger down into that that groove while you use it. Uh, so those are two things uh, that are probably uh, be changing on this, uh, but it's a very cool design. I put it on my key ring, I've been carrying it around, uh, so I actually would have it bottle opener, a little pry bar, a flathead screwdriver, uh, and it's also non-locking. So if you do want a knife that is non-locking, inexpensive, sink of edge, uh, that's the way to go. And also this one, a uh, bench made. Uh, so now, I guess any guesses on what this is? There's some people that are like aficionados of bench made boxes and would be able to probably tell me what this is. Uh, but uh, that's going to be one that came in. I did purchase this. Uh, so a guy uh, was wanting to uh, want to sell it. Uh, came on some hard time, so help him out, um, help me out as well. Uh, but this one came from a, a gentleman named Gordon. Uh, Kiefer, you are correct. So that is, this is the bug out. So bug out. Now this one is model number five three five G R A G R Y dash one. So yes, you did win. You didn't win anything other than bragging rights, but you did win. Yes. So one thing he threw in there though, I wasn't expecting that. I actually wasn't expecting the box. Like he initially said that he didn't have the box. I was like, oh, okay, well, I would rather have the box, but so he surprised me with the box, and then he surprised me also with uh, one of these here, and it's not like me or anything, like, I guess this is just how the guy operates, he just throws stuff in there, so if you ever buy a knife from uh, Gordon, uh, then that's just how he operates, and so he sent me uh, one of these, I don't have one of these, so that's pretty awesome. Here, the, yeah, I don't, haven't tested it, I personally don't like coatings very often, but... I guess if you have an issue with it, um, they have their lifetime warranty, so um, hopefully they'll be able to take care of you for that, uh, for the Cody. And then this one also is one uh, that got dyed. Uh, so if you knew uh, what it looked like, it was that it was that gray finish. Uh, this one got writ dyed. Uh, there is the ones that come like this uh, from, uh, I think, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Uh, so that one is one that comes in this color um, pattern. Uh, but this one was the gray, and then it was dyed black. Uh, so this is the uh, one here for the bug out. So I did lubricate it. Uh, it has a like, for the action that I like, it does have a little bit of play uh, that I can feel. Um, so I might, I might tighten it, might not, uh, but it does have a little bit of play uh, for the, the action that I like for it. Uh, so this is the first one that I had for the Benchmade. Uh, it is a little bit of slick now for now the FRN handles. Uh, so I would like to see a little bit better with that. Uh, probably the G10, uh, so I may eventually uh, go for a G10 one. I'm waiting for uh, Death of All Things uh, to probably do a G10. So if you haven't seen the Death of All Things, um, I actually have it with me too. Uh, so this is the one from Death of All Things. 
Uh, so I picked up this for the Mini Kryptonian. This is the Silver Twill uh, with Deep Carry uh, Satin Clips. Uh, so that's the one there. Uh, so that's the type of work that he does. It's all uh, CNC'd. Uh, there's, I mean, there's a lot of other people out there uh, that do it as well, but this is kind of the comparison between the two. Uh, I fell in love with the original 940 Gold Class, which is like, if you can find one, it's probably like $1,500 or something. Uh, so this is nowhere near as far as that pricing, uh, but I did like the coloring, and I do actually prefer the Griptilian over the 940. Uh, it's kind of controversial, but but that's where I feel on that. Uh, so that's the one there. Uh, and then uh, we have this one here. Uh, we also do have another tool uh, that came in. Uh, I saw it on CRKT's website uh, for the fix and go. Uh, so, yeah, the bug out gold class, uh, I did see that one. It actually glows in the dark too. Uh, so you can actually have uh, within the fibers that's woven into it and everything, there's the bug out gold class uh, that Zach does have. So check out Zach's channel for that one. Uh, but this one is a fix and go. Uh, so I saw this over at the Sportsman's Warehouse. Uh, so it was like $12. I think most places like $15. Uh, so it has all your Torx bits on it. Uh, it rotates and then it actually actuates to the, the furthest one sticking out on the lower position. Uh, so I thought it was pretty uh, interesting in design. So I picked it up to give it a try. Uh, what I found that this is more so if you um, I guess put in your car put in your, your pack if you're going somewhere. Uh, so it keeps everything together, uh, but this is not one that I like for disassembly, uh, just because everything gets in the way. Uh, so so for just quick adjustments for it, you can find the right one, uh, tighten up or loosen up how you want to do it. Uh, but to actually disassemble, you, you loosen it up and you're kind of trying to spin it. And then they, as you're spinning it, then these tools coming out all over the place could probably scratch up your knife or anything else that you're working on. Uh, so that's where I don't really like that as much. Holding out for carbon fiber. Uh, yeah, ADR, yeah, it's it's a lot, but I mean, it's, I don't know, it's it's not too bad when you think of the grand scheme of things. I mean, when you look at the gold class as far as how much they're charging for those type of things, uh, yeah, I mean, you probably, you probably wait out. I mean, with how uh, popular the gold class is, I mean, the bug out is they probably will do a carbon fiber of it uh, eventually uh, for that. So that would be something uh, for that if you want to hold on that, hold out for that uh, Sunshine 21. Um, so you didn't get this one. Uh, so as far as the fix and go. Yeah, it's it's something that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good to have around. I, I did uh, put in my glove box and then uh, one of my pocket clips on one of the. Uh, pass around knives uh, the clip came loose and then at first I was like oh well I was going to put it in the glove box and I was like oh I have this so I busted it out tightened up the, the, the torque screw on it and it was good to go and actually you could carry the knife instead of just having it sit in my glove box so for those type of things uh, this is a good idea uh, I would like to also um, if they could actually I know it makes it more difficult for probably manufacturing purposes but if, even if they put the number as far as what uh, torx bit it is maybe on the top or somewhere else because they have it uh, indented into the metal so you can actually read it that way but it's not for a quick um, not a quick knowledge as far as what uh, Torx bit or what screwdriver bit because they have different styles of this but uh, it's okay uh, if you want to have something in your your sack or your glove box way to go disassembly no uh, do not buy this if this is going to be your primary uh, maintenance tool don't do it not a recommendation for that. So going on to CRKT, uh, so does anybody, would would anybody like a 50% off discount code? You gotta be able to use it though. So if anybody wants to buy the shock, anybody wants to buy anything else, so be aware, it's gonna be through CRKT's website. Uh, so those are full retail and you get 50% off of it. You can buy three knives. I've used the code before. Uh, There's one that I got from CRKT last time I went up and visited them. Uh, since they are based in Oregon, I'm in Oregon, uh, there's not any type of place to go around. So if you do want to visit CRKT, it's an office, uh, so there's not really anything to see. Uh, but uh, if you want to get the code, I do have a, a printout of the coupon code. So it's only one person can use it. So if you try and use it and it doesn't work, 
I'm sorry somebody beat you to it, uh, but uh, also be aware, again, this is MSRP that you're going to, so I double check on maybe Play HQ or somewhere else, because you might buy it, it's like, yeah, I got 50% off, and then you bought it for the same price that you could get anywhere else. Other than the limited edition for the crossbones, you can get that for half off. The shock, that is $750, that is not an error, $750, you can probably get that for half off. So that's like three something. Uh, so coupon code then. This is the coupon code. Uh, and during checkout, you'd be using this one. Uh, I took a picture of it and I lost the card. So um, that's where you're getting it here. So VIP 96048. And then you can get 50% off of up to three items uh, in your cart. Uh, so that is going to be something that is there. Anybody use that? We got 10 people on. Anybody interested in that? Anybody actually wrote that down? Let me know. Uh, but so we got that one, Twist and Fix, we went over. Uh, so uh, also another thing that I got into and 50 other people got into, if you go over to Nick Shabazz's uh, uh, YouTube, uh, there is the next best reviewer. Uh, so there is that contest going on right now. It's going all the way till May 1st. Uh, so now there's a playlist on there. Check some of those channels out because some of them I didn't know about. And then there are some really good ones out there uh, that I was not aware of. And then, uh, but you can fill that out uh, and fill out the form uh, as far as after you watch the video. And then that, all, all that feedback and everything, all the matrix for that comes back to a reviewer. So uh, even if nobody wins or somebody doesn't win, of course, there's not going to be everybody that wins. It's one out of 50 chance of winning. Uh, but look at the content for those folks. Uh, fill out the surveys because that survey information, uh, Nick will be providing it back to the channel. So I'll get some feedback from anybody that watched my video and then fill out the survey. Uh, so uh, think about that uh, for it and then we'll kind of see how it goes. It works well for um, really for exposure. I mean, Nick has, I think, what, 60, 70,000 subscribers uh, comparison to myself, who I'm almost 1,400, which is 1,400 is still, I mean, that's still amazing. It started out with like one and then try to get to 100. So it's it's very interesting how that goes. Uh, but uh, we'll put this one away. But got, we'll put that for there for now. And we'll kind of go from there. Anybody have any questions uh, for anything? Uh, uh, otherwise, you just want to see the Fair and Forge knives. Uh, but uh, this one also is one that came out from uh, this Gerber. Uh, so this is a pretty interesting one. I like the design of it. Uh, if If they would just do it, the knives properly the first time so proper qc work for it uh i'll i'll pay more for it so that's one thing that i had to actually adjust the lock bar tension because it was really really too strong and it was very difficult to actually unlock uh it locked up fine but it was just very difficult that way uh, so there's a pocket square so they're having a lot of cool new designs coming out so that's why I, I hope that they actually do them correctly. There's three of them that are really cool that I want to check out now when they hit the market. Uh, but uh, this one is kind of like a frame lock because you actually take off the scales. It still functions, so you can actually run it without. Uh, but that's going to be how that will operate. And what else do we have on the table? This one also came from uh, Jack Farmboy. Uh, so check him out. He is almost to 1,000. Uh, so if you haven't checked out Jack Farmboy, uh, he has really good storytelling, uh, a lot of cool little you know, videos that he puts out there. Funny guy, uh, very much somebody that uh, has a good rapport with people. Uh, so even from his videos, it feels like you know him, feels like he's a good guy, uh, and then he is. Uh, but that's where he has a really good part about that. Uh, so I think he needs about 25 more people to get to 1,000. 1,000 is like a next milestone, 5,000 is another milestone. It's like milestone after milestone as we go. But if you haven't checked out his, then check out Jack Farmboy. Uh, so he did send this over to, because I haven't uh, saw this before as far as this knife. Uh, so it's one that I want to check out uh, for the K-Bar Dozier. It's a good worker. I mean, you just take this and just use it, not really worry about it. Uh, throw it in with the Legos, and it kind of matches pretty well. Uh, but we'll just look at this one here. So this is probably what people are checking out. Any other questions, any concerns, anything else, anything you guys would like to see? Uh, we also do have the boxes back there. Uh, we have some uh, best tech knives going out. So if you want to see those, we have the malware. Ma malware, either way. Uh, we have that knife, and then we have a... Escra. 
in those boxes. So if you want to see it before I pack it up to ship out, uh, let me know for that. Otherwise, we're going to get right into this one after I take another drink of coffee because it's getting cold and it's a pretty big cup of coffee. But that's where we're going to go here. So no questions, no concerns, anything, anything, no, once, twice, no. All right. I don't want to cut any packaging or anything. Yeah, so this is going to be the ones. Uh, so the the Pro series from Fair and Forge uh, is the production series. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of time uh, for it, unless I can send it directly out. And I guess uh, that's where I, I don't have a good, big grouping of knives to send out right now. Uh, so uh, you're going to look at probably a turnaround time of uh, maybe a few weeks. So if you don't want to send it out that way, or if you want to wait until I have a grouping to send out, uh, then uh, do that. I uh, guess I don't want you to be without your knife for a long time, and I know it's kind of a pain to have that happen. Uh, so uh, let me know, Keeper, as far as what you decide. I uh, guess I could also just Instagram you when I have uh, uh, boxes to go out, and you can determine at that point if you want to be a part of that group or not. And so here we go, here we go. So Archbishop 2.0 uh, for these. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so if you want to, I guess, so check in with Outpost76, uh, Kiefer, uh, and then if you want to do that, uh, he's sending a, a grouping out, going to the same person, uh, so no, trustworthy and everything else, uh, but also, uh, I guess Kiefer, answer the question also, do you mind getting the little divot? Because that's what you're going to have. It's not getting super noticeable, but the Rockwell testing does... Put a divot in there because it's testing the actual hardness of the knife. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, you might have, you probably have a lot of spare knives. Uh, but so if you want to hook up with the uh, Outpost 76, uh, then he would be able to do that for you. Uh, get it now a little bit quicker. So one, two, three. Three of those. So these are all the Archbishops. Oh, you want the divot? It's kind of like a, a like a rite of passage or something to have a divot on your knife. Uh, so we have three here. One that I'm like super excited to check out because when I saw it, it just it was one that I'm really drawn to. Uh, so I don't know how it's going to be, but so this is going to be Archbishops. No, oh, and. This is the very one, so I didn't know which one it was, but this is the very one I wanted to check out. This is the Chevron pattern. Uh, it's basically, yeah, it's just, I think it's really a beautiful design uh, for it, uh, for the Archbishop. So really good on the out. Good choil. Uh, so a lot of the choils that um, I have issues with is because, like, when I put my finger there, I'm, like, trying to make sure my finger doesn't touch the blade. For this one... Uh, for the Todd Knife and Tool knives, I think those have a really good front choil where I don't worry about putting my finger up here uh, where some of the other knives, uh, even though they're kind of listed as a front choil, they're, they're kind of sketchy. Uh, so this is the one that I want to check out though. So the Chevron pattern, as, as you see, I mean, you can see through that uh, for those. So they're patterns, but they also have, a, they're also see-through. Uh, with some little parts to, of course, keep it intact. But so these are the ones available. Uh, for these, uh, these are now provided by Fair and Forge for the uh, Apex Passering Group. Uh, for these here, uh, so that's something that uh, is amazing by them. We reach out to those groups to see if they can actually get things going. Uh, they are the best flipping knives on the market. So for these here, uh, for the Arch Archbishop. Yep, send it out to out Outpost now, Kiefer, uh, and then he'll have the best turnaround time for you because he's going to send out a few. 
I don't think outpost. I don't think I have any results from you, so I don't know if you want to be part of that spreadsheet. Um, I just don't think I have you on there. Uh, but if you have any results that you want to include, just email it over to me, and I'll put it in there. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, so this is then to be so the pro or production of Fair and Forge. So that's one. And I'll probably try and keep the boxes together or the packaging. So this is going to be the other one. Uh, so these are also in M390. So I wasn't aware that they're on that steel, but yeah, M390. Whew. So, okay. So that's going to be pretty good there as well. And then uh, there's another one. So there's a contoured one. So another just version of the knife. Here. So there's a contoured version, also the Archbishop. So Archbishop 2.0, which is the production version again, uh, produced uh, by no, we. Uh, so that's going to be who they're actually doing it through. Uh, it, one thing about the production, uh, you're actually getting a lot more, I guess, hands-on. I guess then it goes over to uh, the Fair and Forge. Uh, they actually uh, QC the knives. Uh, before uh, they hit your hand, uh, so you're uh, more apt to get something that uh, is of a good quality that they actually want to have sent out of their shop. Uh, so that's one thing that's different than buying this versus a mass drop knife. Mass drop knives do not go, uh, I don't think they go to Fair and Forge, they don't, they're don't. they not going to handle each one of those, but the production, uh, you will now have it handled, and also if you want to have it customized, uh, they do have, I'm sorry, I was leaving that out. They, if you want to have it customized, uh, you can do that to the matchup ones too, uh, but uh, the production, you can get those customized as well. And then we have this one here. So this one is called... I don't know what this is called. But this one has the past through. I think this is the same one that Nick got uh, for this one. Uh, so uh, Nick Shabazz um, was the one that actually picked these up from Fair and Forge and then sent it my way not to then disperse it out to the group. Uh, but this is the styling uh, that I believe that he picked up uh, for this one, if I remember correctly, from his Instagram page. Uh, so that's where uh, it has a good grip to it. And with this cutout, it adds really a good confidence to it. Uh, so that's where I like the styling of this one. It still adds a good grip to it. Uh, but I don't know. I think, I don't know. Maybe this one would be the winner for that, but uh, those are the two there. Close it slowly. Yep, so those are all the ones there. So it's not drop shutty, but it's definitely one that doesn't require much. Uh, so a lot of that's the lock bar pressure that you're going to have for it, as far as that drop shut action. And then uh, we do have another one coming in uh, from, if anybody, has anybody heard of the brand uh, uh, Effenberg? Uh, not effing grow. No, so that's not the manufacturer or the rebrander and that's on Amazon. So that's effing grow. Uh, this one's effing Berg. Uh, so that one is the one that's going to be coming out. Uh, he just no, finishing out no, his first run of the no, Forte uh, 325. It's a 3.25 inch blade. So that one will be coming out to the group at some point. Yeah, but he's trying to give it a go and then uh, see... Uh, where that ends up uh, for his brand. So um, check him out uh, for that one. If you like it that much, order it. Uh, it is on the higher end of things. So, I mean, that's going to be about $420, $440 uh, for that knife. Uh, but the good sign and sound to it, too. I mean, as far as uh, the closure. It doesn't have any play to it either. Uh, so that's something that... Uh, it's kind of a fail, like if any knives, like the, the detent in closed position has a play to it, so when you actually give a little bit of pull to it, then it actually will move. That's. It seems like it's maybe they didn't do the lock bar correctly or the liner correctly for that. Uh, but 
Uh, these are the ones there. Uh, also, some news for it. Uh, so, uh, Wesson, uh, if you know, know of their brand, um, I think his video was probably the highest viewed out of all the you know, the Blade Show West videos that I had. But he has the micro knife. Uh, they just finished out the Kickstarter campaign of the almond, not almond, but like all A L L M A N, all man, almond. Uh, so that one's the one uh, that uh, was. Uh, just finished out now for their Kickstarter campaign. Uh, their goal is twenty-four thousand uh, dollars. They reached that in under two hours uh, for that, and they ended out their whole campaign uh, with about a hundred seventy-one thousand uh, dollars for their campaign. Uh, so that one's going to be uh, the Wesson knife. Uh, so you can check it out if you haven't seen it. Uh, you you kind of missed out on the first run for that as far as Kickstarter, uh, but uh, after that uh, first run, then of course they'll probably have. Uh, the others that will come out as well uh, for those. And then they have it in uh, G10, Micarta, uh, Titanium, uh, and then S35 for the blade steel. And so those are the ones that you have there. Uh, cool. Uh, so that's the one that came in. Uh, so that was a pretty cool one. Um, has anybody seen? Let's see. I guess we'll look at these. So the malware, malware. I think for Best Tech, uh, they've always been one that um, I thought did a, a decent job in things. I felt that they uh, needed to be a little bit better at a few things. Uh, but I think for for this knife, uh, I feel they've met up with uh, we as far as their quality goes. <laughs> Thanks, Kiefer. Uh, but uh, I think they met up with we for their quality for this one. So for the malware... Uh, this one is one that I feel uh, matches up uh, with we as far as their uh, their manufacturing process. Uh, so if you haven't checked out the malware knife, uh, this one is one uh, that I would recommend. Uh, so that's that one here. So there's the Todd Knife and Tool Knife. Uh, there's their second one. The first one was the Roxy that came out through Wii. And then this one is through Best Tech. And I think, I think Best Tech would be the way to go. Uh, for their future ones, uh, at least in my personal opinion, uh, for the knife. Yeah, the blades, the blades are really stabby. Uh, so now they have, I think, another one that's coming out that has more of a standard uh, profile. And so it's like actually going to be more of the drop point type of blade. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, Best Tech is now, so they've been uh, really uh, plugging away trying to get things done. Uh, but I think they're getting closer to the point where they can uh, really become uh, a great OEM manufacturer. Because right now, Wii is like doing just about everything. Uh, so if we ever just says we're not making knives anymore, I think most of the community would just fall down because there wouldn't be anybody making the knives. Uh, so that's something that's not great. Uh, so Best Tech you know, would be a good one to pick that up. Uh, maybe a good one for some manufacturers to check out to see if there would actually be a good uh, good knife for them. Uh, but really well done uh, for it. Uh, so I like it. Uh, also, also even for their pocket clip. So it makes sense to me because in this little divot cutout um, that's right here. So when you're actually taking it out of pocket, your finger grabs onto that. So it actually gives you a really good hold uh, for the area. Uh, for that one layer. Uh, Anything else? Any questions, concerns? Anything you guys want to see? Because uh, uh, I've been talking for now like 43 minutes and then hasn't been much conversation on the other side. So uh, let me know if there's anything else that you guys want to see. Uh, anybody that's going to use that coupon code, uh, that one's still available. Yeah, I don't think it had a lanyard hole. Does it have a lanyard hole? I don't know if, you know if it has a place for a lanyard on that one. But yeah, I don't use lanyards myself. Uh, smock, uh, I believe that's the button lock, non-button lock. Um, it's okay. Um, I thought it was one that... Yep, yeah, nope. No lanyard. You are correct. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. I don't use lanyards myself. Uh, but uh, the smock, like, I believe that's still the one that has the button lock that's actually not a button lock. But it seems okay. I haven't really checked it out. And when I when I saw it was a button lock, I was like, yes, take my money. And then they saw it wasn't a button lock. And 
It's kind of like a hybrid of the you know, compression lock. This seems okay. Um, I don't know if I'll check one out or not uh, for that. Um, but that's about all I have to cover. Uh, so if anything else that you guys want to check out, I'll put this coupon code back on the screen. Yeah, button compression. Uh, yeah, it reminds me of the thistle. Um, so if anybody now remembers the Kershaw uh, thistle, I don't know, that, that kind of, that's what it reminds me of as far as that type of actuation. Uh, so 50% off MSRP uh, for CRKT. Uh, so, and then, I mean, that's going to be some of the ones, uh, so that Crossbones is M390, Titanium. Uh, Nick, Nick Shabazz just put up a video on that one as well. Uh, so you can actually check out to see what you think. Otherwise, ch pick up that shock and shock people with it because that thing is a monster. Um, I almost considered buying it <laughs> just because it was 50% off of $750. Uh, but I was just like, I no, I'm never going to use that and just wasting my money. Uh, but some people, it's going to be like the, their shining star of their collection. So if you want to do that, then do that as well. Uh, but... And then that's the end of LA Police Gear. Um, so uh, that's going to be the last time we test them uh, since they um, do not care to talk to the community. Uh, this one's not S35, even though they're supposed to be. The others were S35, but their heat treat was horrible. So, I mean, probably would probably take a lesser steel at better heat treat. Uh, so that's going to be how it goes. Uh, nobody's into traditionals. Like I want to get into tr traditional knives, uh, and that's where I have. I don't have a lot of experience with it. And I mean, that's where uh, it seems like it's harder for me to get into that. Now uh, those ones, I did pick up uh, a slip joint, uh, but it's kind of a modern traditional. Uh, so uh, Stat Gear uh, brought out the ledge, also Kickstarter, uh, but uh, that one I did bring in uh, to check that one out. So out and Steve, how's it going? Uh, so, uh, PGR, if you recommend uh, one that's actually a t t traditional knife to kind of start out with, uh, then uh, let me know as far as what you think as far as where I should start out on that journey. Because uh, right now, uh, I, I like the mechanisms. I like actions on things. Uh, the other ones, uh, just they feel like, like their artwork where you can really appreciate the craftsmanship. Uh, and then, but they're more tools. I think that's where I think some of the traditionals uh, fall into play is they're more tools than uh, fidget toys. Uh, so at least for me, that's what I'm thinking as far as what that is. Yeah, GEC, uh, I hear a lot about them, so that might be where I start with that whole thing. Uh, so, and that's one thing I don't really understand because GEC, like they're a modern company that is recreating classic designs uh, but like that's where i don't like granted no uh, counterfeits co uh, copies are not good but like a lot of those are the same type of thing uh, they're just recreating like old designs uh, but uh, with modern tools uh, so that's where it just like it's kind of seems like a weird uh, type of thing for that as far as where that line is, is as far as like only modern knives or how that works for traditional knives Uh, for that so yeah but i might check out a gec uh, there's so many different ones uh, for that so i have to kind of wade through all the different styles all the different blade shapes uh, sharp maker i don't have a sharp maker um, i have the work sharp uh, so i actually do like um, the work sharp uh, so i picked up the standard one which was the canonian version i picked it up like second hand for like 50 dollars and then i got the actual um, the grinder attachment uh, so that one actually it seems to work really well uh, and so i'm going to be playing around with that it's more of like an actual um, belt grinder in a sense so i guess it's more to what you would find in more actual knife shops and everything else because you're actually using the belt grind belt that actually goes around it you set the, the angle of the belt and you lay it down and actually just go kind of flat on it and actually run it and sharpen it that way so that's what i'm using now as well as just regular wet stones uh, to try and kind of learn that craft because I think a lot of those things, uh, the the fixture systems are great because you're getting the same angle over and over again so you can get a really fine edge on it. Uh, but, I mean, it still takes practice, no, don't get me wrong, but um, I think there's something missing or something that's great about learning uh, a craft, uh, something that's dying 
uh, something that like a lot of people don't know. Uh, so it's a it's a mechanical skill. So that's kind of what I like about uh, going back to those older styles. Oh, stingers to the bank account and Patty. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's like the other ones. Like, don't get into, don't get into pocket watch. Don't get into watches. Don't get into watches. And that's the whole thing. Probably, I guess, with the traditionals too. I guess the whole thing in general. I guess, because again, I started with this was this was the first knife. So I started with this knife. Uh, this was going to be my end all, be all knife. Now this was going to be the one that I researched, and the one that said that this is going to be the knife that I'm only going to buy. This knife, and that's it. And obviously, that's not the case. So, uh, so that's kind of how it goes. Yeah. So that's all. I'll check out some of the traditionals. I know it's dangerous to bank count, uh, but uh, that's probably where I'll start off with uh, probably a GEC, and see where that goes. Um, but yeah, I know it's. I almost killed Steve. Like I don't. Know if, I don't think I brought that up, but I think he was eating his waffles or something. And then uh, I brought that up on one of the videos as far as uh, this knife was going to be um, the only knife. So. Uh, this is going to be my like uh, Lord of the Rings ring, the one knife to rule them all. Uh, but it's still not bad. It, it flips horribly, uh, but it's on uh, phosphorus bronze uh, washers. And I couldn't even get it out there. Uh, but it's on the bronze, bronze washers. Not a horrible knife. It's super light. Oh, pancakes. I'm sorry, Steve. It was pancakes, not waffles. So no, it seems like Steve likes pancakes more so. Uh, but... Yeah, good thing I didn't kill him. Would feel bad if I you know, had killed a member of the community by you know, one of my comments. And then the phone's ringing, so and that's probably going to be somebody. You know, one moment, while I hang that up. I still have a landline, which is kind of weird. Yeah, uh, uh, that would be weird. The best button lock, in uh, my opinion, uh, is going to be uh, right now. Uh, uh, I guess the budget one is still the CRKT TITAC 2. Uh, and then the one that I have... Um, that's a button lock that is just not great. It is the Medford. Uh, so the Medford uh, Smooth Criminal, they will be coming out with a larger one as well. Um, so if you are looking for a button lock, I feel that Medford really got that down uh, fairly well uh, for it. Uh, so I would recommend... Yeah, I know, phone ringing, it's like one of those things. Uh, but yeah, so for best button lock, in my opinion... Uh, Budget-wise, um, I like the CRKT TITAC 2, which you can get like for $30, bucks, $20. Uh, Steel is not the best for it either, um, but uh, that's the one there. And then uh, there's a Tangram Vector uh, that is okay. Uh, not great, though. Really? Milwaukee button lock? I mean, you might be right, but I don't know. Uh, so we'll have to see on that one as far as how that goes. Uh, for the Milwaukee, uh, but the other button lock I like is actually uh, it's a cobalt. I mean that utility knife that was kind of cool. Um, <laughs> I have it on my like best slicer for that one. Yes, uh, there will be a, a Medford uh, that is going to be a larger smooth criminal. Uh, they're also going to be an automatic uh, Medford. Uh, so that's kind of where or why the smooth criminal kind of existed in the first place is because they were going to have the smooth criminal and the smooth criminal. Uh, also an automatic knife, uh, so they will be going down that route. Yeah, I don't really like the no, the vector. It's yeah, it doesn't really work as well. Is that a joke or is that actually legitimate for the Milwaukee button lock? It's actually pretty good. What else do you guys want to see? Yeah, we're pretty much winding down uh, for things, but 
Uh, appreciate the comments and the communication for that. Uh, so I do like that uh, quite a bit. Yeah, so I might check it out. Uh, so the Milwaukee, uh, I did also pick up recently an ABKT, uh, American Buffalo Knife and Tool. Uh, they just released one uh, that has a similar blade style um, to um, the Arclight Slimfoot. So hopefully I don't get caught out for like like some type of counterfeit or copy on that one, but utility knife. Uh, so I don't know then. Like if it's a utility knife uh, for Milwaukee, I, like I might have to put it up against uh, the one that I have from Cobalt because the Cobalt one is is fantastic. I mean that one I got uh, as recommendation from uh, Troy's Flooring Solutions uh, for the Cobalt one, and that one's that one's great. Uh, for that uh, utility knife, but I might, still might check out the Milwaukee one as well. Uh, but uh, what else we got? Yeah, this one's still pretty cool. I don't know if everybody even saw this one. I think you see it on JT's channel. Uh, but there's the Echelon. Uh, this is about Kershaw before uh, JG10 was actually uh, like a popular thing. Uh, so this is one that's uh, speed safe. Uh, this is one that is, I think, back in like 2012 uh, time frame. Oop. So it's pretty cool. So if nothing else, uh, we'll probably end it out in uh, a few more minutes. We'll probably end out about the hour mark. We're at about 56 uh, minutes. Uh, so check out the Blind Knife Review. I really don't have a favorite football team. I'm one that actually doesn't watch a lot of football. Uh, so I watched the Super Bowl. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't really know how they got there, uh, but I'll watch those type of things. So uh, if anybody watched Philip DeFranco's show, uh, as far as that, uh, he has a sports shirt. Uh, so no matter what team, you're just saying sports. Yay! I, I don't really watch a lot of sports. So I'm kind of odd in that fashion. Uh, so I know it's probably horrible. Where it's like, how dare you not have a team? Uh, but uh, with uh, my wife, uh, her dad worked at once at uh, for the Oregon Beavers. So, like college side, that's the way we go, just because that's the family thing. Uh, but otherwise, not too much. So, uh, anything else? If anything else, I forgot my knife yesterday. No. Oh. Yeah, I forgot my knife, and I didn't have anything. Uh, so that was something that was pretty bad. Uh, so, I will see how everything goes. Now, um, you feel really lost. Like it's kind of like when you leave your, leave your cell phone at home. Uh, that's kind of the same type of thing with that. Uh, but thank you very much for everything. Um, I'll leave it up for just a moment here. If there's any other questions, if you have any other things about that you have that you want to ask, anything that you want to see specifically, uh, let me know. Let me know as far as uh, what you think about the channel as well. And somebody else is calling me. So I guess on that note. Have a great day. Somebody else really wants to get a hold of me. Thank you very much. Have a great night.